Alright, back to 107 fix about the last house since I didn't finish. These are all the things right now. Number 44. Lenny's favorite food is smoothies, which she constantly makes with creative ingredients like spinach. Number 45. Luna, age I think 15, you mean comes next. She's the okay, most okay. musically inclined of the last spinach has since a very like... punk rock. I don't Number know 46. That. Her love of music came from seeing her idol, Mick Swagger, when she was in the seventh grade. After that, her wardrobe and outlook on life changed completely. However, I since her first concert was so amazing, she has a tendency to over-prepare her siblings for their first concerts. Number 47. Luna plays many instruments and often provides background music for her siblings' activities at their request. It's your own one-woman mobile band. Number 48. She also tends to quote song lyrics and titles whenever she talks, and when Luna listens to music, she loves to speak in a British accent. Number 49. Luna even has has her own roadie, a burly guy with a nose ring named Chunk. Sounds about right. Number 50. Mm. The next sister down the line is 14-year-old Lou Ann, the family comedian. She's always ready with a pun for every situation and loves to pull pranks on her siblings. Yeah, she ha, did you really think I'd fall for Number 51. Some of Luann's pranks are simple, like squirting a flower, as seen in the pilot. But some are more complex, like all the intricate pranks she pulled in the episode April Fool's Rules. Number 52. Wow. Luann is so obsessed lot. with comedy a that she even records herself talking in her sleep but just in case she comes up with a great joke while snoozing. Number 53. Luann practices many forms of comedy, including ventriloquism. She has a ventriloquist dummy named Mr. Coconuts. Number 54. She also has a retired dummy named Colonel Crackers, who can apparently speak on his own, which freaks Lincoln out and it freaks me out too. Number 55. Yeah, Luan can often be seen well. wearing Groucho Marx glasses, complete with a mustache. Unlike in real life, where these glasses are just a prop, Luan's Groucho glasses double as her reading glasses. Number 56. In the episode, Making the Case, Luan is revealed to have her own comedy website where she uploads funny videos, particularly ones of Lincoln from when he was younger. However, she always makes sure to get permission from the people she videotapes before putting their videos online. How sweet and legal. Number 57. Lynn Loud comes next in the sibling line. She is 13 and is named after her father, Lynn Sr. Number 58. Lynn is athletic and hyper-competitive, turning anything and everything into a sport, even chores. Yeah, Number 59. She plays any picture. sport she can get her hands on, including martial arts like kickboxing and lucha libre. In the episode The Loudest Yard, she yeah. becomes a local football star after impersonating Lincoln on his football team for a whole season. Showed up by your sister. Burn. Number 60. Yeah, Lynn is a deep a sleeper and it's snores it's and drools while she's yeah, knocked out. Now, Number 61. One of Lincoln's younger sisters is Lucy Loud, age 8. She's a fan of all things spooky and is an avid poet. Number 62. Lucy is the only Loud sister who doesn't have blonde or brown hair, instead sporting jet black hair with bangs that cover her eyes at all times. Number 63. Ironically enough, in Latin, Lucy means light, which Lucy does not convey at all. She's actually a typical goth girl, dressed in all black and hiding in dark corners of the house, like the attic, basement, and air vents. Number 64. Lucy is your resident creeper. She has a knack for suddenly appearing and scaring the living daylights out of her siblings. And she also runs her own funeral home, as seen in Along Came a Sister. <laughs> Number 65. Lucy also loves writing morose poems and often reads them to her siblings. Uh, hopefully they're supportive of her artistic efforts. She could be the next Edgar Allan Poe. Number 66. The next siblings are the twins, Lana and Lola, both age 6. Though they're the same age, they are wildly different personality-wise. Number 67. Lana is a tomboy and the handiest member of the Loud family. She's their go-to gal when something needs fixing and isn't afraid to get her hand dirty. Number 68. Lana is also an animal lover and even acts like a dog when she's upset. Ironically, she's older than Lola by two minutes, so the oldest is not always the most mature. Number 69. Oh, Lola, in contrast to her twin so sister, is the cartoon. ultimate girly girl. She is really vain know. and wants to compete in beauty pageants, so she's world. constantly fixing her hair and makeup and looking into mirrors to stay as pretty as possible. She is also the only loud sister in the younger half of the family who wears earrings. Number 70. She also has a short temper and a knack for manipulation, so her sisters do their best to stay off her bad side. As seen in the episode, Tadler's tale, Lola has no problem snitching on her siblings for personal gain. Play, I'll tell mom you're reading comics on the roof in your underwear again! Number 71. The second to last loud sister is Lisa, age 4. Though she is super young, Lisa is totally brilliant and already has a PhD and a Nobel Prize. Dang, what am I doing with my life? Number 72. Lisa's hobbies include cooking up strange experiments and solving long, difficult math problems. Number 73. Lisa even takes care of paying the loud house's bills, as seen in the episode Chore and Peace. She is literally years ahead of me, and most other Americans. Number 74. She is very stoic, but also 
always helpful to her sisters, often tutoring them or sometimes outright doing their homework for them. Number 75. Lily Loud is the youngest member of the family, at just 15 months old. She is well known for leaving legendary stinky diapers all over the house. They're so bad they can clear a room, which Lincoln used to his advantage in the pilot. Number 76. Lily doesn't have much hair. In fact, she's the only character who doesn't have visible eyebrows. I'm sure they'll grow in eventually. Number 77. As mentioned earlier, the Louds also have a grandfather that appears in the series who they lovingly call Pop Pop. So far, Pop Pop's only appeared on the episode Cover Girls, where he video chats with the kids. But since he doesn't have his glasses on, even though they're right around his neck, the kids all act like other members of the family. Number 78. That does it for the Loud family. The next most important character is Lincoln's best friend, Clyde McBride, who is an only child. Number 79. Clyde has a massive crush on Lori. It's so bad that he loses the ability to speak when she's around, and sometimes breaks out into a nosebleed or even faints. Jeez, I don't know if that's love or an allergic reaction. Number 80. Clyde's parents are named Howard and Harold. That's right, folks. Clyde has two dads. Number 81. The first episode Howard and Harold appeared in, Overnight Success, made television history as the first time a Nickelodeon show featured a married same-sex couple. The reveal was met with overwhelmingly positive reactions. Number 82. Clyde's parents are very overprotective of him, especially concerning his meals. He is allergic to nuts, gluten intolerant, can't have too much sugar, and can't drink orange juice with pulp. Knew it. Allergies. Number 83. Howard and Harold also make sure Clyde has everything he could possibly need for a sleepover, including a sleeping bag, footy pajamas, white noise machine, humidifier, dehumidifier, and a long list of emergency numbers. Number 84. Clyde is very intelligent and has good manners, too. He even does his parents' taxes for them. Number 85. After Clyde comes Bobby, Lori's boyfriend, whom she is constantly texting. He is a jack-of-all-trades and works as a pizza delivery boy, a lifeguard, a mall security guard, and a bag boy at the grocery store. Wow! Wow, definitely not lazy. Number 86. Nope. Bobby doesn't even appear on screen until the episode Undie Pressure, where Lori makes a bet with Lincoln that she won't talk to her boyfriend, and in return, Lincoln can't read around the house in his underwear. Eventually, mm-hmm. Bobby breaks into the Loud House to see what Lori's deal is, causing her to lose the bet. Number 87. Yep. Bobby and Lincoln bond over the fact that neither of them have brothers, coming up with a secret handshake and hanging out a lot in episodes like Affair to Remember, making Lori jealous in the process. Number 88. Bobby has a little sister named Bonnie who ends up bullying Lincoln at school in episodes Heavy Metal. Lincoln is embarrassed to tell his sisters about being bullied at school, but when they find out that it's a girl, they form a sister NATO and tell Lincoln that she just has a crush on him. So romantic. That's a classic. Number 89. Of course, when Lincoln tries to kiss Ronnie Ann, she gives him a black eye. Every man's dream girl. She later mm-hmm. sends him a written apology along with a stake to help his eye. And her phone number. Number 90. Ronnie Ann first appears on screen in the episode Save the Date. When she and Lincoln go out on a real date, they have been sort of secretly together ever since. Mm-hmm. Number 91. Other recurring characters include the loud, cranky neighbor, Mr. Grouse. His name comes from a synonym for the word complain, since that that's pretty much all here does. Number 92. Mrs. Johnson is the boy's fifth grade teacher. She wears a skirt with a black zigzag line on it, which looks suspiciously like the one seen on Charlie Brown's shirt in the Peanuts cartoon. Number 93. This is far from the first Peanuts reference on the show. Another notable reference pops up in the episode The Loudest Yard, when Lucy pulls the classic football gag on Lincoln while he's trying to play. Number 94. In the episode Homespun, a flashback to when the house was frozen over due to an overactive AC revealed that Lincoln's winter time outfit is the same as Charlie Brown's outfit from a Charlie Brown Christmas. Number 95. The Louds can be most frequently seen traveling in the family car, Benzilla, which makes many appearances throughout the series. The kids even totally destroy it after a fight in the episode The Sweet Spot. Number 96. Though the show premiered on May 2nd, 2016 in the U.S., viewers in Australia and New Zealand didn't get it until May 30th. Number 97. Audiences were given two episodes early as a sneak peek that they could watch online or on their phones on various outlets like Nick.com, iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Those episodes were A Tale of Two Tables and The Sweet Spot. Number 98. Yeah, Save the Date is about a double date that Lori and Lincoln go on with Bobby and his younger sister, who once bullied Lincoln, Ronnie Ann. Number 99. The best part about the date is how it all got started. Lincoln found a slappy yeah. Joe in his pants that had a love note from Ronnie Ann. Created. Number 100. The Louds frequent a restaurant called Jean John's French Mex Buffet. In that restaurant, there's a picture of the Arc de Triomphe, a historic monument in Paris, France. Number 101. At the end of the episode, Fred comforts Lincoln and says, Story is old as time, which is a reference yeah. to Beauty and the Beast and the famous song, Tale is old as time. Number 102. In
In the episode The Waiting Game, some of the school characters are named after Loud House storyboard artists. Kyle is named after Kyle Marshall, Darren is named after Darren McGowan, Jordan is named after Jordan Coach, and Miguel is named after Miguel Puga. Number 103. They don't just pay tribute to the artists. The character, Ken, was named after the Loud House production coordinator, Ken Moo. Number 104. If you look closely in The Waiting Game, there's a scene where there's a hand resting on Clyde's shoulder. There's no actual character there. Spooky. Number 105. There are a few pop culture references in The Waiting Game. The title itself is a reference to the old dating game show, The Dating Game. Number 106. The title card also shows Lincoln looking a lot like Big Boy from the popular chain, Big Boy's Restaurant. Number 107. The high school has a dance that is underwater themed, which could possibly be referring to the famous Enchantment Under the Sea dance in Back to the Future. So many references! Feels like you are going back in time. And we wish we could go forward in time to get more Loud House episodes sooner. Thanks for watching! Mm -hmm. Before I really can say bye, I gotta sign off this thing.